Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Learn to Play Traveler Mongoose 2nd Edition. Uh, we got our Mongoose rules in front. I've got, I'm going to have put up the charts and any tables or any pages up here in this section. And in, in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to do character creation. We're going to learn how to make a character. Now, in a previous video, we talked about the Traveler universe slightly, very little bit, and a little bit about the dice, and a little bit about uh, tech levels. Now, and how characters roll for stats and roll for abilities, things like that. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend going back and checking that video out. If you got friends that are interested in learning how to play Traveler, make sure they check out this series so that they can understand these rules. All right, so let's get right to it. Let's bring it up right here. Okay, character creation. Now, I am not going to roll any dice on camera. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick some numbers and hypotheticalize this. And I'm not going to um, actually make a character on screen. I'm going to go, because if I did, it would only show a single path of character creation. So what I need to explain is all the different paths that are available, the ones less trodden, because there are going to be paths that you as a character creation do not follow, and then there will be others that you do follow, and sometimes you'll go down one path and not and then, and then get diverted into another path. Character creation in Traveler is not your decision as a player. And this is, this is a, a, a concept that some people can't wrap their heads around. And it turns a little, a few people off. But I am super excited about it. I, I love the way uh, Traveler makes characters. And if you look on Amazon, you'll find a t-shirt that says, if you haven't died in character creation, you haven't lived. Or something like that. And... Uh, that's Traveler. Traveler, in the past, has had fatalities during character creation. So you make a character, and after about an hour's worth of rolling dice and consulting charts and everything else, your character dies. And you go, what? My character's dead! And the referee takes your sheet and whack, rips it up. It's time to make a new character. Okay, so luckily, the mongoose edition of Traveler has kind of alleviated that it's super hard to die in character creation. It can be done, but it's 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 ridiculously hard. Okay, so so don't worry about that. You will possibly get maimed and injured quite a bit, and uh, but there's high tech science that can you can spend some money on medical bills and get that all taken care of. So don't don't worry about your character living or dying. Uh, there's something called group creation, and you can see it right there. Group creation, they want you to, if possible, have all of your players make their characters at the same time, at the same table, and have them make them concurrently. So, like, each player does the same task all at the same time. And the reason why that is, and this will become apparent later, when... A player gets an event that would affect his character, he can ask or put forward to the party uh, if anyone else would like to participate in that event. Um, it does a couple of things. It allows that those two players, their characters, have had some history. So they've had some scenario that they've gone through together that means, hey, I know you from back then, you know, whatever. Uh, and it alleviates the need for the referee to force the players together. He doesn't have to go, you all meet in a spaceport bar. He doesn't have to do that because the players have had events take place together. Usually, these events are bad. So you don't want to be a participant in that event. Uh, but sometimes you do, or or it's not so bad that it's unmanageable. Now, the advantage of doing this is that both players get to choose a skill, and any skill other than jack-of-all-trades. So they can take a skill, raise it by one, just for having participated in one of their party members' events. So it, it it's a win 
it's a lose-win scenario because you you take the penalty from the event, but then you get in you get a skill. But in addition to that, now you know this other player, and there's something you can talk about around the table. It creates conversation during character creation, and it allows your imagination to flow and like you have to piece together like how did I know you and was I selling drugs and were you the one buying the drugs and was this a sting operation and they come into all kinds of stories and that's the that's the bread and butter of the group creation let's talk about the general creation just in general okay as a player you're going to roll your character's stats and then from there you pick a number of background skills that just tells you what you were able to pick up and learn while you were an adolescent. Now, when you hit 18 is when your character creation starts. So at that point, you're at 18 years old. Now, each period of time, which in the, in the universe, they call them term, a term of service is four years, or a term of education is four years, or a, any it's a term of time and it's four years. And then what you do in that term is you roll a bunch of dice, you consult a few charts, and what it does is it lets you know what skills you have, it lets you know if you got promoted or if you're able to advance into the next term of that career. It basically tells you all kinds of things about your character. Uh, you continue this process of going from term to term to term to term until you or the game decides that you are done. And if you decide you're done, you get out of those and you start what they call a mustering out. And when you muster out, you get money and you get material items based on how successful you were in these terms. In addition to that, if you go four terms or more, you age. And so uh, remember, you started at 18, and if you go four terms, which is 16 years, add that to 18, you get 34. So when you hit 34, you have to roll dice and consult the aging tar chart, and we'll get to that in the later, but your stats might go down, or they might not. You might, have, you might roll high enough. And if they do, and you want to continue with your career, because you can, uh, you do another term. And at the end of that fifth term, you roll aging again. And then if you want to continue your terms, you can. And you keep going until you decide to stop or the character creation system forces you to stop. And then once you do, you muster out, you get your money, you get your material items, go to the shop, you spend a 2,000 credits or less. And then once you do that, you're ready to play. Rolling for characteristics. Now, before I do that, I'm going to switch a couple of pages, and I'm going to go to page 10. And on page 10, there is a flow chart, right? This chart basically tells you everything I just told you, but it breaks it down in a path that's a little confusing. So if you if we're not going to be using this chart um, very much, because but you can you can refer to page 10 of your book, follow along with that chart as I explain how you progress in your character. But we're not going to use that chart. Okay. First thing you... Well, what is it? Let's look at it. What is the first thing it says? Roll for characteristics. Then background skills. I just said that, right? Choose an education. Got it. Okay. But let's talk about characteristics. We're back to page 8. This is how you do it. You roll 2d6. You know what d6 are. You roll 2d6. You get a number between 2 and 12. Usually averaging around 7. Right, so you roll this and you write these six numbers down on a piece of paper. Then, once you've written all six numbers down, then you decide where you want to put those numbers in your stats. And your stats are strength, dexterity, endurance, intellect, education, and social standing. So you got six stats. Uh, you know, your strength is obviously your fit, physical fitness, how, how much muscle you have. And dexterity is your nimbleness and your coordination, your agility. You're familiar with these numbers. Uh, and then endurance is just that, your stamina, determination, ability to sustain damage. 
The reason why I say that is because when you take damage, you always take it off of endurance first. All right, then you go to uh, mental characteristics, which is your intellect. That's your quickness of mind, right? And then education is your learning and experience. And then social standing. So uh, it's your place in society. What they basically mean like that is like what your standard of living is. Do you normally live in a cardboard box? Maybe a social standing of one? Or are you uh, a duke of a, of a sector of space? You know, social standing of 15. Okay. Uh, your stats can never go over... 15, and your um, skills, just as a general point, during character creation cannot go over 4. So at that point, um, you lose your skills. Now, if your social standing ever goes over 15, which is possible, every time it goes over 15, instead of raising your social standing, you actually get a piece of an item called a ship share, and I'll explain that later. So now once you've determined your stats, you come over here to the characteristic modifiers and you apply or you, you write that modifier down next to your stat. So if you have an 11 strength, your strength has a plus one. But if it had a 12 strength, you'd be at plus two, right? Now if you have a, a two intellect, you're at minus two to intellect. Now. That doesn't mean you subtract two points off your intellect. That's not what it means. It, that's the die modifier, the DM. So if I say make an intelligence roll, you roll two dice, subtract the two, and that's your result. All right, now your background skills, you get three plus or minus your education modifier. So if you've got a really high education, let's say a 12, and that gives you two extra die roll modifiers, so that's your DM, so you could have potentially, right? So you, it says zero to six, but there's no way to get a plus three unless you got a 15 or higher stat. And you can't start with a 15 or higher stat. You got to roll two dice and it's six. It's two sixes, it's 12. So that's a misprint or not a misprint. Maybe they're expecting, maybe you'll allow certain types of alien races that allow your education to be modified. Who knows? So when you pick a background skill, you pick from this chart right here at the bottom left-hand corner, uh, now, you'll notice that they have zeros next to them, like art zero. Okay, what that means is you have the skill in art, so you don't get a plus on the die roll. So if you did not have art zero, if it was just art blank, then you would get a minus three to the die roll. So no skill, minus three. Zero skill is plus zero. And then every level above that, like one, two, three, four, whatever, is the die roll modifier. All right, and then it says, where do I come from? Well, you, you decide where you came from. And it's usually your skills that you learned as a background inform where you came from. If you have a social standing higher than 10, you will get a possible noble title, like knight, baron, marquis, count, things like that. Now, if you want to know more about nobles the the galaxy the the empire is run by nobility uh leading from the emperor at the top all the way down to maybe a baron or a knight who controls planets uh subsectors might be controlled by a count uh, a sector might be controlled by a duke a domain might be controlled by an archduke and then the emperor is the emperor once you've um rolled your stats wrote down all the modifiers for each individual stat, and then picked your uh, background skills. Then you decide if you want to have a, an education. You don't have to. You can go straight into the army. You can go straight into the scout service. You can do any of that. You don't have to have a career. Also, you don't even have to do any character creation. You could start the game at 18. You'll have no money, and you'll only have your background skills. Nobody wants to do that. So you, you can do you can choose a university or a military academy. Okay, if you uh, if you choose either one of these, pre-career education and your careers all have this thing called entry or qualification. Uh, careers have something called qualification. Schools have something called entry. It's exactly the same thing. Let's take a look at university real quick because it's on this page right here. It says education seven. 
That doesn't mean you have to have an education, a seven or better, to get entry. What that means is you roll dice and you need to get a seven or better, but you get to modify your role with your education modifier. So if you have a higher education, that'll modify the die roll and you'll be able to get in. You don't have to go to university in your first term. You can do a job, get out, or and then go to university if you want. And that's what this next line is saying. You get a minus one if it's term two, and you get a minus two if it's term three. By the time you get to term four, you cannot do education anymore. Uh, you do get a plus one if your social standing is nine or better. That's what that's saying. Uh, I, I know it looks like education seven or better and social standing nine or better, but that's not what it means. You get a plus one on the die roll if you have a really high social standing. If you enter, good. Now you've started your term in the university. You can write it down on your piece of paper, term one, university, right? And then you choose a level zero and a level one skill from the following list. And it gives you the list, you know, admin, advocate, animals, all that right there that you can see. And then you also increase your education by one. Okay. Now, before you do graduation, what you need to do is events during pre-career education. Okay. Before you do graduation, you got to do the events during the education because graduation comes at the end, right? Graduate at the end. So you roll the events and you'll notice it goes from 2 to 12. This is page 15 now. But you also might want to notice some of these are not good, like number 11, right? It says war comes. There's a draft. You become a drifter or j submit yourself to the draft. Either way, you do not graduate. Basically, they took you out of school or you are a draft dodger and you fled. Okay, or you might roll something like you become involved in tightly knit clique group, make pact, remaining friends, and basically you gain D3 allies, or you know you get hurt or some anything, right? You got you see them all right there. So let's say it's something simple like taking advantage of your youth, you party as much as you study, gain carouse one. So when it has a number next to the skill like zero or one, then what you do is you learn the skill at that level. It doesn't increase it by one. It is that level. If it just says you gain carouse, no number, nothing, that means you add a number, you add a level to whatever carouse you already have. If you don't have carouse, it goes to one, skipping zero. It, it's, at, it's a full level. If you already have Corrals 1, it would go to Corrals 2. But in this case, it is Corrals 1, and because you don't have Corrals, it goes straight to Corrals 1. Even if you if you had Corrals 2, you would not gain anything because that would make Corrals 1. So it's not a bonus. Okay, so let's say you got that. You come back to graduation. Now, Intelligence 7. So guess what? That's a die roll. You need a 7 or better. You get to add your Intelligence modifier. And if you roll an 11 or more, you graduate with honors. It doesn't take an education to graduate. It takes intelligence. Okay, and then once you graduate, you come down here to the graduation benefits, right? It says you increase your skill levels uh, above. The ones you chose at 0 and 1 become 1 and 2, and your education instead of a 1 becomes, no, comes by an additional 2, so that would be a total of 3, right? You know, right there. Basically, you, you add some skills. If you graduate and you join a military, you can immediately try to be commissioned officer. Um, that's cool. And the same thing happens in the military uh, academy. It does it does the exact same thing. It's just that the skill choices are a little bit different. Once you're done with your education, then you go to these black pages back here, which are each one is a different career choice that you could make. And so you just finished term one. Now you're going into term two. And then what you do is you have to choose a career that you want to join. And then you have to roll your qualification. You got to get your skills and all that. So let's, let's 
flip this to Marine. Let's just do Marine because, hey, everybody wants to be a Marine. No, they don't. But either way. So let's look at Marine. It says qualification, endurance, six or better. So what you need to do is roll dice, add your endurance modifier, and try to get a six or better. You get a minus one for every previous career, not term. So I don't have a previous career, so I don't get a minus one. But if I was in the Army and I was in the Scouts and I was a pirate, those are all considered careers. I know a pirate's a career, but it's considered a career, and you would get a minus one per previous career. But since I haven't had a previous career, no minus. Am I age 30 or more? No, so I don't get a minus two. So I have to roll uh, six or better, right, uh, on two dice, and I add my endurance modifier. Let's say I make the roll. Now I'm, now I'm in the Marines. Now, if you fail to qualify for the job you chose, you have two choices. You can submit yourself to the draft, which is a die roll to determine what career you get, or you can join Drifters. Drifters is always open. All right, and remember that you can only submit yourself to the draft once in your career. Go through the draft and then go into another career when you don't qualify for that next career you have to submit yourself back to being draft or drifter but since you've already done draft you have to be a drifter all right so let's let's say that you do succeed in your qualification you do make it into the marines right now you have to choose are you going to be support star marine or ground assault all the careers are laid out exactly the same way so uh, we'll go over like what the different careers are. I'm just going to go over the Marine real quick. Uh, if you choose the one you choose, then you look up, up here where it says Career Progress. You have Survival and Advancement. But before you do the Survival and Advancement, you do your Skill Training. You get a the first time, first time your first career you get what's called basic training. You get all of the service skills at level zero. The next time you enter a new career, you don't get basic training. Well, you do, you get basic training, but you only get one of the surf service skills of your choice. You don't roll, you just pick one. Uh, and it is at level zero. And all of these would be at level zero. So it's basically giving you the rudimentary training to be in that career. Then you get one skill for every term that you serve in a career, and you get one skill for every advancement role you make, and you get one skill if you become commissioned. And if you look up here, it says commission, social, eight or better, you, you decide if you want to be commissioned. If you want to be commissioned, you got to make that role. If you make, you don't have to, it's voluntary. If you don't make the role, then you're not. But if you are commissioned, then you become rank one, uh, which is officer, right? If, if you are not commissioned, you are automatically rank zero enlisted, where it says Marine which automatically gives you gun combat at one or melee blade at one. Uh, so these skills are in addition to the ones that you would normally learn in your career. You've just rolled on commission and failed, let's say, and you chose to be ground assault, okay, and you've got all your service skills, your athletic, vac suit, tactics, heavy weapons, gun combat, and stealth. You're also a Marine at rank zero, and you have gun combat. Let's say you choose energy, and you have melee, blade, at one. As soon as you receive a skill level one or higher, if it's a specialty skill, you have to choose a specialty in that skill. And gun combat has archaic energy and slug and like melee has like bludgeon and blade and stuff like that so uh this character that i'm making would have chose gun combat energy and 
then he would move up to survival. Now before you roll before you roll advancement, you roll your survival. Now I've got ground assault. It says endurance seven or better. So I look at my endurance modifier, I roll dice, try to get a seven or more. So far, it's not rocket science. If I succeed, then I roll on the event table. If I fail, then I roll on the mishap table. If you fail your survival roll, you failed to survive the term, not life. You failed to survive the term, so you are kicked out of the service or whatever career you're in, and you roll on the mishap table. If you succeed, you roll on the event. And remember, if you get an event, you can share it with another member of your party, and they could take advantage of that, and then they can pick a skill. You do one term at a time, all the players do their first term, then all the players will do their second term, then all players will do their third term, so it'll keep them all engaged when they're making their character. Let's say I make my survival roll, and then I roll on the event table, and I get a special event, and it will tell you what you get. Now once you get it, then you go back to advancement roll. Now remember, we tried to become commissioned, but we aren't commissioned. So what we're doing is we're advancing in the enlisted ranks. If I had made my commission roll, then I could advance in the officer ranks. Okay, so to advance, now advance is not just to advance your rank, but it's also to be able to advance into the same career for the next term. If you fail the advance, you don't get promoted, but if the failure on the dice equal to or lower than the number of terms in this career, then you fail to proceed into the next career, into the next term. Uh, that's not going to happen to you on your first term, right? This is your first term as a Marine. So there's no way I can roll a one on two dice unless my education modifier is super low, right? Um, it usually doesn't happen to fail to progress unless you're in like your third or fourth or fifth term and you roll like snake eyes or something really low and your modifier is not high enough to get it high enough. Okay, so education five or better is not much. They'll take you back if you got a good education. And so then you go back. Now, because I successfully completed a Marine term, that gives me a benefit roll because you get one benefit roll for every term of service in any career. Uh, if you fail survival, you also lose the benefit roll. If you fail your advancement because you're kicked out, you also lose your benefit roll. Uh, in this case, I would get the benefit roll. And at the end of my career, let's say, let's jump forward and say I spent three terms as a Marine. And then I had one term as school. Let's say I rolled, that would be four terms. So I'd have to make an aging roll. I would roll two dice, subtract the number of terms, my age basically, my number of terms, and that will give me a number between, if I rolled snake eyes, minus four, from negative two upwards, right? If I roll a one or better, there's no effect on my aging. But if I rolled a, on page 47, if I roll less than a one, then some of my characteristics will be reduced. Aging is not injury. So aging cannot be bought off with medical you have to take this aging effect. But some of these events will say, or mishaps, if you fail survival, you roll on mishaps, and most of them say you're injured and you lose stats. When you're injured, you can uh, take medical assistance, which is 5,000 credits per minus. So if I had a minus two, it'd be 10,000 credits. And I would just write that down as a 10,000 credit bill and then at the end of my career, the three years, I roll money. And once I get all my money, I just deduct my medical bills from the top. If you don't make enough money to pay off your medical bills, then someone's going to come to collect Joe's organs. So let's say I did three terms as a Marine and I decide I want to quit. I want to get out. I, wanna, I, I don't want to suffer the effects of aging. I just want to get out. 
you get three dice. Let's say I made it to rank four sergeant in the enlisted, right? Rank four means I get an extra two dice on the benefit roll. So I'm rolling five dice. I roll, I pick and choose if I'm going to use cash or benefits. If I decide cash, you can only roll cash three times in character creation. So if I have multiple careers, a dozen dice to roll, and I, I can only use a total of three of them on money. But you can see here that the chart goes up to seven. Well, the only way you can get a seven on money is if you have gambling skill. And the only way you can get a seven on material benefits is if you're rank five or six. You can get armor, which is a thousand credits or less, or 10,000 credits or less, I think. Yeah, I think it's 10,000 credits or less. You can add to your stats. You can get weapons. You can get a Traveler's Aid Society membership. This is all Marines. But now let's let's go um, and look at the skill chart just, just a second. I want to I back up just a little bit. In those three careers, those three terms, uh, apparently I had gotten promoted three times because I had made it to rank four somehow. I would have gotten my career... I would have got one for every term in the service. Actually, the first term I get all my service skills as basic training, right? And then I would get one more for being advanced, advanced level to rank one. So I'd get the one for advancement. But then I'd get uh, my next two terms. I would have got one for each term of service that I survived. And then I would have, and if I got promoted again, I would have got one for each each advancement, right? Those, those would have been automatic. Plus, I would, as an enlisted man, I would have got, at Lance Corporal, I would have got gun combat at one again, so I would choose slug. And then at Lance Sergeant, I would have got leadership one. So those are some skills that would go onto my character sheet. During character creation, you've got to do things in order because they could affect the outcome of future roles or something like that. So let's talk about skills. And... The, You'll notice that there are like seven charts here, and every character class has a number of charts. One of them is usually called advanced education. See the third chart over? On the Marines, it says you have to have a minimum education of eight or better. So the only way I could roll on that chart is if I had an eight or better education. There's another one that says commissioned only. The only way I could roll on this commission table is if I successfully had made a commission. We're going to assume I didn't because I was a sergeant. Okay, and let's, let's say I don't have an education of eight or better. Maybe I've got a seven, right? So I can't roll on those two tables. And because I'm ground assault, and I st stuck with it, I was ground assault. You could change every term, but I decided to stay ground assault the whole time. I cannot roll on the support or star marine chart. I can only roll on the ground assault chart. I can always roll on personal development. I can roll on personal development anytime. I can roll on service. Personal development is like what I do in my off time. Service skills is like what I would do during my normal, average, everyday career as a Marine. And ground assault are skills that I would learn because of my MOS, because of my job in the Marines. And so those are the only three charts I can roll on. So with each time I learn a skill, I pick a chart. I say, okay, I want to roll on personal development. I roll a die. And because I got three, I added one to my endurance. And then that way, next roll for advancement, I'll get a plus one because I have a, or I'll, I'll get a, maybe I'll, maybe it'll go up. Maybe it won't. And then serve it, or actually next time I can roll a skill, now I can roll it on advanced education because I had a seven, it went up to eight. Now, now I have the option of rolling on advanced education. But then I decide I want to roll on service skills. You roll a die and you get tactics. or you roll. And now, you notice tactics doesn't have a zero, doesn't have a one next to it. That means the level goes up by one. So it's either a one or a two or a three. When you receive level one in a skill, you have to pick a specialty. So in tactics, I decided to pick ground tactics. There's also something called naval tactics. And that you'll learn when we go over all the different skills. And that's pretty much character creation. There's a there's a few little nuances and tweaks. You don't need to go over all the little rules. But these are the different professions you can choose from. Agent. Agents are usually like intelligence agents, like CIA, they're spies. Or they're law enforcement, like FBI or police, local police or something like that. And then there's the Army. The Army 
is not the Marines. The Army is ground in on planet in atmosphere style combat like infantry or armored vehicles or you know helicopters and aircraft and stuff like that that's the army marines are kind of a department of the navy kind of thing they're space combat on moons space stations uh, they also attack planets too, don't get me wrong, but usually that's reserved for the army. But marines sometimes have like commando units or hit squads that hit specific uh, style uh, attacks. Uh, they don't have commandos anymore in this character creation. That's in an old version of travel. Uh, consider ground attack kind of like commandos. Citizen. Basically you're just a Joe Blow citizen growing up in whatever. And then you got Drifter. He's a guy that failed. He's basically unemployed, you know. Then you got Entertainer, which is either like you're an artist, a journalist, a performer, maybe you're a singer or an actor, or maybe you're just a newspaper or a TV star, or TV like a news newscaster or news reporter. Then you got Marine, which we just kind of went over. Then you got Merchant. Okay, merchant is a, isn't a guy in the a market stall in the corner of the, the city. No, the merchant is a guy that is on a spaceship and he's taking cargo from planet to planet. He's either doing this on a private vessel, small, you know, like uh, Bubba Gump and his shrimp. That's he. That would be a free trader. Then you have what's called a merchant marine. Merchant marine you work for this big major mega corporation that has gigantic freighters that carry huge amounts of cargo from point A to point B. That's a merchant marine. And broker is someone who works planet side buying and selling cargo, getting it shipped off or brought in. Then you got Navy. Navy is not wet Navy. Navy is the space, space Navy. You got starships, fighters, destroyers and cruisers and dreadnoughts and things like that. And in the Navy, you could be line or crew. Basically, that means you do every job on the ship except engineer or gunner. That's a totally different job position. And then flight. Flight is not someone who flies the ship. He's someone that flies small craft like fighters or shuttles. Crew would be someone who mans the bridge. Noble. Okay, a noble is someone of social standing 10 or better. Uh, if you have a social standing of 10 or better, you're automatically accepted in the nobles. Uh, if you don't, then you have to roll a high number to get in. And what a noble is, is uh, they're in charge, they're government officials, basically. They, you know, you know what a noble is. It, they, they're usually born into it, but not always. Sometimes they're given nobility, they're advanced into nobility because of their position or their maybe they're a war hero or something like that. And you're given a plot of land and you're so you're knighted and then you say, okay, you have this continent. This is your continent. Um, there are many like it, but this is yours. And then there's rogue. Rogue is someone who lives on the shadier side of the law. Uh, they're either thieves, enforcers or pirates. They're not necessarily bad, but they're definitely not good. Scholar. Now, Scholar is someone that uses his brain. Uh, basically, he's a field researcher. He's out there like excavating like alien ruins and stuff. Or he's a scientist. He's you know in the lab mixing chemicals. And then there's the physician. He's the doctor, right? He's the guy that uh, not only does he not only does he practice medicine, but maybe he's uh, experimental medicine, or maybe he's like just a trying to discover the cure for cancer or something like that. Well, I guess that would be a, I guess that would be a scientist, but okay. But those are all scholars. Then there's the scout. The scout is uh, one of the military careers. It has a, it has like a reputation of being loners because scouts, not always, but scouts are usually in small ships, exploring planets that nobody's gone to. They're trying to make contact, first contact. They're trying to um, uh, discover new worlds, a new jump, you know, area, new stars and stuff like that. Basically, they're out there exploring. And that's one of them, explorer. Then there's surveyor. Surveyor is a guy that would go to a planet and 
take all the readings. Basically, how much water is on this planet? How much, how much vegetation? What do the animals look like? How many people live on this planet? That's a survey. Now, courier is someone who carries messages from world to world. And why is that important? Well, because you don't have radios that can go faster than light. So you have to carry messages from world to world. And the scout service is basically the Pony Express. There's a couple of other careers in this book that you don't have immediate access to. One of them is called Prisoner. And if during one of your events or life events, you get sent to prison, then you do the prisoner event or prisoner career for a term or more sometimes because you have to beat a th certain threshold at the end of your term to see if you get released. And if not, you're still in prison and you just have to do prison career after prison career. When in any of those careers, if you make an advancement roll and you roll a natural 12, you have to take another term in that career. You can't quit. So if it's like your seventh or eighth term and you roll a natural 12, well, guess what? You got to do one more and you got to age again. Uh, and then the last career, keep it under the keep it under the hush, is called Scion. There's a there is a Scion career all the way in the back of the book, where you can be a Scionic, and that's up to your referee to decide if he's going to allow players to have Scionics because Scionics do have a tendency to break the game, but sometimes not depending on what Scionic abilities you have. Okay. All right, so far so good. We're pretty much at the end of character creation. Now, when you muster out, there are benefits that you could receive. Remember those die rolls from the Marine that you could have received? Well, there are things like armor, there's ally, blade, you get to choose some kind of bladed weapon, uh, characteristic increase, you can increase your characteristics, but they can't go over 15. Combat implant, so you get to pick one of your combat implants, put it in. Uh, you can gain a contact. You could get a ship. Uh, there are a number of ships you can get. One's free trader, lab ship, ship's boat, scout ship. Uh, I think there's yacht too, right? Yacht. And if you get a ship, you don't just get the ship outright. It's not like, um, here, have a ship. It's you get 25% ownership of that ship. Uh, if you roll the result four times, now you have 100% ownership of that ship. But each time you roll the, that result, you get 25% more ownership in the ship. Uh, what that does is it can either reduce the amount you have to pay on the mortgage, or it could reduce the amount of time left on the mortgage. That's, a, that's between you and the referee. You can get a gun. You can get a personal vehicle, like a motorcycle or a car. You could get scientific equipment. You could get a ship's boat. I don't know why anybody would want a ship's boat. It doesn't have a jump engine. Okay, and then you could get a ship share. Okay, ship shares are worth about a million credits, but you can't sell them. You have to use them. So you have to, um, you could put them towards a ship, or you can tell the referee that you have your ship shares and you want to get your yearly income out of them. Uh, you get a thousand credits a year per ship share like mailed to you. It's like a dividend from owning a part of a ship somewhere. Uh, you can get a weapon. You can get the Traveler's Aid Society membership. Uh, that's a membership in an elite club and the Traveler's Aid Society you can learn about in a later video. Pensions. Okay, now if you were a in one career for five terms or more, then that career will pay you uh, per year an amount. Then there's aging and anagathics. Anagathics start, stops a certain amount of aging, but uh, anagathics are usually frowned upon. Uh, but and, and once you start anagathics, then you have to continue anagathics uh, because if you fail to get your injection or whatever it is, then all of your aging happens instantaneously and you basically just wither away. But so you would, uh, if it's a couple of years past your die rolls, you'd be only be rolling like once. But if it's like 20 years past, then you've got to roll like five times. Uh, might kill you. There's an injury table in case you get injured during an event. Last thing during character creation before, um, yeah, skills and tasks. 
we're going to talk about in the next video. But last thing is the skill packages. They show that there's eight skill packages here. The players and the referee have to kind of decide which package is best for the party. Uh, and then once you decide, then the players in the game will pick one after each other the skills that are listed. And they're all at level one. They're not a plus one. They're not a zero. They don't add to your skill. They give you level one. So what the best way to use these, potentially, is someone who doesn't have, like let's say if they pick the Explorer skill package, that's the one the party wants. And one of the players doesn't have pilot. He says, you know what, the first skill there's pilot, I could use pilot, give him pilot. Next guy over here goes, I don't have astrogation, let's pick astrogation. And basically, this assures the party has all the skills it needs to play the game, the type of game the referee's gonna run. If you're doing an investigator game, make sure you use the investigator skill package. If you're planning on doing a mercenary game, get, make sure they have the mercenary skill package. Plus, that helps with when you make a character, you didn't get everything you thought you wanted. Let's say you wanted to be the ship's pilot, but for some reason you got stuck being a marine, and every time you rolled, all you got was gun combat and vac suit and electronics, engineering. You never got pilot. So this is a way to give that player that wanted to have a skill and he didn't get it to at least get it. And that way he can play the character he wants. All right, well, that was character creation in a nutshell. Uh, come on back for our, our, our next video, which we're going to talk about uh, the skills. We're going to talk about the skills and how to do skill tasks and skill checks and the difficulties, what boon and bane mean, and then we'll talk about uh, time frames, and then what each of the skills represent and how to make those roles. All right, I'll catch you next time.